Hello there. I could do better than that. What is up, everybody? Welcome to Baseball Days 27. Ha, huh, much better, much better. Anyways, down to business. The first half of the Major League season is over. And after the Home Run Derby and All-Star break, we're going to have a few days off until the second half starts. But I'm telling you, what a fun first half it was in 2021. I mean, there was it was just a roller coaster of emotions. For starters, after two years of waiting, Vladdy Guerrero Jr. is raking. He's having an amazing breakout season. Definitely an MVP candidate in the American League. And if he doesn't win it, then it should be Shohei Otani. I mean, the dude is just a modern-day Babe Ruth. One day he's hitting home runs to the moon, and the next day he's striking out batters. Plus, the amount of no-hitters there have been. There have already been nine no-hitters in the first half alone. Well, technically, MLB says there's already been seven no-hitters because two of them have been in seven-inning games, and apparently those don't count. But here at Baseball Days, we believe that a no-hitter is when you complete the game without giving up a single hit. And according to MLB, seven-inning double-headers are complete games. So, therefore, nine no-hitters. Anyways, where was I? Alright, celebrating the first half of the Major League season. There have been so many incredible stories so far this year. Carlos Rendon, who for years has been dealing with injuries and doubts of whether or not he should play the game of baseball, has risen to the top and has become an all-star and Cy Young contender in 2021. The Oakland Athletics started off the year, get this, 1-6. And six, and then they will go on to win the next 13 games in a row and have now become one of the best teams in the American League. And probably, without a doubt, the biggest shock of the year, the San Francisco Giants are in first place in the NL West. What? So yeah, not the Dodgers. Not the Padres, but the San Francisco Giants are the ones in first place in the NL West. Here's the amazing thing though. No one, and I mean no one, saw this coming. Not MLB analytics, not MLB fans, not even me. No one saw this coming. Everyone thought the Giants were either going to finish in fourth place and possibly third, but no, here they are in first place. It's, it's crazy. Now you're probably wondering, Jimmy, why is this such a shock? Well, since 2017, the Giants for a while have been kind of struggling. But here in 2021, they're good. So here's the real question. How did a team go from mediocre to superstars? Well, let's do a breakdown. In order to find out how the Giants are doing now, we first must go back to the year 2020 where it all began. Now, to begin the year, things were not looking good for the Giants. Why were there worries? Well, like I said before earlier, the Giants had been struggling from 2017 up to that point. Don't believe me? Watch this.
So yeah, things were not looking good by the bay. How did this happen? How did the Giants get so bad? Well, the answer is that their best players in Evan Longoria, Brandon Belt, Buster Posey, and Johnny Cueto, along with Brandon Crawford, they have all been dealing with injuries that kept them off the field. And once they were healed up and went back onto the field, they were a little bit rusty, and as a result, they never really performed like they used to. Plus, they were going into the 2020 season without their longtime manager in Bruce Bochy. Why? Well, because he retired. To make matters worse, longtime ace and postseason hero Madison Bumgarner had left the Giants and joined the division rival Arizona Diamondbacks. The only positive thing for the Giants was young superstar Mike Yastrzemski. And that was it. Now the Giants did make some signings during the offseason, but they weren't really promising at the time. Who did they sign? Well, they signed veteran pitchers Drew Smiley, Trevor Cahill, and Kevin Gossman and infielders Wilmer Flores and Darren Ruff. Good ball players, but no one was really like, woohoo, we have an MVP on our team, we're gonna win! Like, no one was thinking like that. They were just thinking, rebuild. As for the manager, they hired Gabe Kepler, who, according to Phillies fans, stinks. You see, before getting signed by the Giants, Gabe Kepler had two years of managerial experience in the good old city of brotherly love, Philadelphia. And his time there wasn't exactly good. You see, during his two years in Philadelphia, he had a reputation of... choking. You see, by the beginning of August of 2018, the Phillies were in first place in the NL East. Long story short, they blew it. And they would end up in third place with a record of 80 and 82. In 2019, more of the same. The Phillies finished the year 81 and 81. They started off the year very hot, but then near the end, they sort of blew it. And this time, instead of finishing in third place, they finished in fourth. And for the Phillies, that was the final straw. Instead of fixing the real problem, which was a terrible bullpen and struggling hitters, the Phillies just decided to fire Gabe Kapler following the 2019 season. So yeah, a struggling baseball team, plus a quote-unquote manager that is known for choking, equals... <laughs> Then this happens. Yep, the COVID-19 pandemic suspended the baseball season. And after months of, are we going to have a season? Are we not going to have a season? Are we going to have a season? Are we not going to have a season? Yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Major League Baseball finally said, yes! Major League Baseball and the Players Union came up with a brand new 60-game format and a new playoff format. Hmm. I think I'm going to change the scenery to explain to you the playoff format. Much better. Anyway, step right up, step right up, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the brand new and approved MLB playoff format for the 2020 season. Hey, you want to get into the playoffs? Want to get into the playoffs? Well, all you have to do is win first place or the new thing second place in your MLB division. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. But if you can't win first or second, good news, we have not one, but two wild card spots. So all you have to do for the next couple of months is do nothing but win, win, win. You can even be mediocre and still find yourself into the playoff hunts. It's 60 games, not 162. So good luck. <laughs> that was probably the weirdest thing I've ever done in my entire life. <laughs> you think with the new playoff formats that fans of the Giants and fans of baseball analytics just think, hey, as long as the Giants get a good start and don't look back, they can actually do some good in this short season, right? Wrong. You see, even in a 60-game season, no one still thought the Giants were going to succeed at all. Why? Well, for two reasons. 
One, they were out of shape. And this was a problem for everyone in Major League Baseball. It wasn't just Giants. I mean, when you sit in your house all day and don't really exercise, you tend to get a little bit, um, chunky. And number two, despite struggling for the past couple of seasons, Buster Posey was still a fan favorite in San Francisco. And it was heartbreaking news to discover that he had decided to opt out of the 2020 season for health reasons. So yeah, despite losing one of your favorite players and doubts from fans, analytics, and baseball people in general, the San Francisco Giants were all like, eh, let's give it a try and let's hope we win. And what happens next shocks everyone. So yeah, the Giants were actually doing good. Not amazing, not like guaranteed first place, but decent enough to stay in the playoff hunt. In fact, by the beginning of September, they were in the second wild card spot. The only thing that can stop the Giants is if they lose some random series against a AL or NL West team. And in the meantime, some team in, behind them in the wild card race would catch fire and beat them to the top. Wait, what? Oh, really? Oh, huh. apparently that's what happened. On September 18th of 2020, the San Francisco Giants did face up against the powerhouse Oakland Athletics, and the Athletics meant business on that day. On the mound for the A's was Chris Bassett, and he was excellent in this game. He went six and two thirds innings, struck out seven, only walked three, gave up three hits, but the main thing was that he gave up zero runs throughout the game. As for the bats, they were on fire. Matt Olson had a three-run home run to right to make the score 4 nothing. Then Tommy Listella hit a single up the middle to make it 5 nothing. Then Marcus Simeon sealed the deal with a single to left to make the score 6 nothing. Athletics. Jumped in the next day, and it was more of the same. This time on the mound for the A's was Jesus Lazardo, and he was excellent as well. He went six innings, struck out seven batters, only gave up five hits, zero walks, and just like his buddy Chris from yesterday, he gave up zero runs to the Giants. As for the batters, more of the same. It gets started with a Matt Olsen RBI single to center to make the score 1-0 Oakland in the bottom of the 4th. Then in the bottom of the 7th, Jake Lamb crushes a 2-run home run to rights to make the score 3-0 Athletics. Yeah, it's just getting worse. Then Tommy Lastella hits a deep fly ball to center. Back goes Dubon, but he can't make the catches off the wall. Two runs scored, the bond fields it, but it's no use. It will be a RBI triple for Tommy Lastella to make it 5 nothing. 
Then Marcus Simeon hits a high fly ball. Looks like an easy catch, but unfortunately, Darren Ruff could not field it. It's another run, and it's 6 nothing Athletics. Meanwhile, the Cincinnati Reds were on fire in late September. They were winning game after game, coming in clutch, and as a result, they took over the second wildcard spot, leaving the Giants high and dry. Jump to the last day of the regular season, and the Giants were only one game out of another wildcard spot. And if they really wanted it, all they had to do was win one game against, oh no, the Padres. Yeah, the Padres, they, they are a team you do not joke about. They are stacked from top to bottom. Every one of their hitters is a beast. Their pitching is dominant. So if the Giants really want to get to the postseason, they must be on their A game today. Will they win? Let's find out. Was that going to be the end? After hard work, you're going to lose 5-1 at your home stadium? Well, Brandon Crawford had other ideas. Oh my gosh, that's how the season ends? That's how it ends? On a terrible, 
terrible strike three call. That was way below the knees. That was a ball for sure. Oh my gosh. Terrible, terrible. Look. So yeah, of course, with that loss, that eliminates the Giants officially out of the postseason and ending their season like that. To make matters worse, during the offseason, all of their key veterans that helped them succeed left for different teams. Drew Smiley went to the Braves, and Trevor Cahill went to the Pirates. They did sign Kevin Gossman back, but by then, it did not matter. The Giants were back to square one. No one believed that they would succeed at all. And to make matters worse, MLB got rid of not only the 60-game format, they were back to 162, but they also got rid of the new playoff format. So if the Giants wanted to get into the playoffs, they had to either finish in first place or in the wild card, and they were in a stacked, and I mean stacked, NL West. The Dodgers were good, the Padres were good, and it was it just looked bad for them. Very, very bad. And once again, the Giants did make moves, they did sign some players, but uh, talk about deja vu, they were not very exciting at all. The Giants signed veteran catcher Kurt Casale, veteran pitcher Alex Wood, and they also signed the man who was sort of responsible for kicking the Giants out of the playoffs in Tommy LaStella. Awkward. And they required Lamont Wade Jr. in a trade with the Minnesota Twins. So yeah, this was it. It looked like the Giants were finally going to sink. Fight! Change of plans, said San Francisco. They decided, you know what? We're no longer going to be just an okay baseball team looking to finish in fourth or third place. We are going to be a baseball team on fire looking to win it all. How did this happen? Well, we have a few players to thank for that. Starting it off, we have Kevin Gossman, who is having a Cy Young year. He's 9-3 with a 1.73 ERA and 133 strikeouts. Plus, he has a strikeout rate of 10.4 per 9 innings. And we also got Anthony Disclafani, a guy who only played 9 games and had an ERA in the 7s in 2020. But here in 2021, he has completely changed his game around and become a stud on the mound. He's 10-3 and three and has an ERA of 2.68 with 100 strikeouts on the nose and has a strikeout rate of 8.3 per 9 innings. 
And just to add the cherry on top, he has two complete games already this year. Both of them were shutouts. And we also have Alex Wood, who is having a solid year with a 8-3 record and a ERA of 3.67. Moving from the mound to the plates, we have Brandon Crawford, who has risen like a phoenix here in 2021. His bat is back and better than ever. He has 18 home runs, a 282 batting average, 58 RBIs, and an OPS of 912. On top of that, he is still a great defender. And of course, we have great sluggers in Wilmer Flores, Donovan Solano, Mike Yastrzemski, and Darren Ruff. They are all having solid years for the Giants, all getting big hits, all driving in runs when they matter. Everyone from top to bottom is working together like a well-oiled machine. But of course, the biggest story coming out of Cisco is the face of the franchise himself, Buster Posey. Buster is having an amazing season. He's batting 328 and has 12 home runs. True, he only has 28 RBIs, but hey, when you have an OPS of 968, let the other guys do the RBI stuff for you. So yeah, without doubt, this has been an amazing first half of the year for the Giants. However, it's only in the first half, and there's still a whole lot of games to go. And for the Giants, it is going to get tough and tough. For starters, they still have 10 games with the Dodgers, and with the Padres, and both of them are looking to win first place too, and they are not going to quit, and especially the Dodgers, because they've been winning first place in the NL West since way back in 2013, and they're not going to give it up that easily, especially to their rivals. So yeah, the Giants have a tough road ahead of them. It could be done, but it is going to be hard and tough, or rough. Get it? Like, 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 Darren Ruff? Ha 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 ha. Puns. That wasn't funny. That was not funny. But yeah, will they succeed in the second half? I have no clue. But what I do know is that it's going to be fun to watch. Anyways, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. I'm Jimmy Green. Bye bye.